Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So today we have kind of an interesting project. It's a sheet metal forming project. Um, and it's a part for the Marvel Series 8 uh, vertical bandsaw. This is this tilting frame vertical bandsaw that I got recently. Um, it's kind of a weird looking piece. So uh, let's get into the details of it here and you guys can check it out. Uh, we're going to make a forming die that uh, helps us form this um, sheet metal piece that we need here. So uh, let's check it out. All right, this is the lower band wheel uh, for the saw. And um, this is the, it's kind of got an interesting gear reduction. There's a little pinion gear that uh, Adam Booth helped me repair. He did some spray welding on the shaft and helped me repair that. Um, anyway, that drives against this gear and then the, uh, the blade tracks on the other side of this. Well, there's a bearing assembly that goes in here and this is one of the bearings and you can see it's kind of kind of crunchy and chowdery and this is the piece that we need to replace here now this thing's all torn up here it's snagged on something I don't know what and uh, is all shredded and honestly it wasn't it wasn't designed very well it doesn't you know it was basically just covering a shielded bearing here so crud was able to kind of migrate into the bearing and uh, you know didn't really do what it was supposed to do so we're going to create one that's a little bit different than this and hopefully better uh, at least I think it's going to be better and well uh, I'm going to make a sketch of it so you guys can get the get the general idea but there's some interesting stuff going on here and um, this is the shaft that the uh, the wheel rides on and it's kind of an odd shaft and I wanted to share some of the details of this with you because this is how they do the blade tracking. This wheel has to be able to tip um, so that the, the blade will track properly and this is how they, uh, they handle the lower wheel tracking. So let's take a quick look at that then we'll look at our sketch for our sheet metal piece and then uh, go from there. Okay so this is the this is the lower wheel mount here and uh, this this stub axle here actually fits in here like so okay um, what's interesting about this is how they and you can see that uh, that this can tip right well what they've done uh, that's kind of interesting is and I don't, hopefully you can see that you see this is kind of not round it's kind of uh, oval slightly oval what they've done is machined the sides of this away and left this little ring up in the front here or this little section up in the front and that's actually that's actually the pivot okay let's see if I get this going the right way so that's top so that should go the other way like so so that fits in there like so and you can see that this has the ability to tip well this is the screw that allows that to tip so there's tension on it this way from the blade and when we screw this in here, it comes down. Uh, I should clean that out a little better. Let's see if I can get it. There it goes. See, it's moving. So this allows this to tip. And, uh, and so we can adjust the tracking of the blade of uh, um, the band blade, or this, the saw blade, I should say. And then there's a, there's a pin that, uh, that fits through this whole mess here. That, that keeps things uh, oriented. Get it in there. All right, well, there it goes. So that, that keeps this from rotating in relation to that. So uh, anyways, um, it's kind of, it's a very simple tracking adjustment. Uh, and the reason I show it is a lot of guys out there, they want to make a belt sander, for example. So there you go. There's a belt tracking uh, mechanism for you there. Just leave a leave a ring here, relieve this section here, and then uh, you've got a, 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 tipping, uh, a tipping mount there. So, okay. So let's go look at this sheet metal piece we're gonna create. All right, let's, uh, all good projects uh, start out with a sketch. So uh, let's sketch a cross section of the, uh, of the lower band wheel here to start with. Uh, make sure I'm not, all right. So this is part of the wheel hub, make that a little bigger, like that, all right, all 
Okay, so this is the this is the gear here. All right, then um, it has a bore through it here, and there's a little snap ring. Like that. Okay, so it's got a snap ring like so. Okay, so this is this is a cross section through the uh, the lower band wheel that we just looked at. Then there's a uh, there's a big bearing here. Like so, okay, and then another bearing sits right in this area. All right, like so, okay. And then um, there's a sh the shaft that we looked at, that uh, the tilting shaft that we that we looked at. It's it's a. I'm just gonna draw it kind of disassembled because uh, otherwise it'll just get too confusing. So shaft. Okay, there's a thread in the end. Um, let's do that. Okay, and then over on this side, uh, there's a little cap, like so. It's got a hole through it, and then there's a fastener. Well, not that big. There's a fastener that retains it all. Okay, so there's also a little spacer ring that sits right here, like that. All right. Okay. So where this where this uh, sheet metal cap fits is it fits actually in between here in this section here and it shields this bearing from all the crud that's dropping down when you're cutting right and um, so what we want to do is make a little cap and I'm, I'm just going to draw it kind of oversized here we're going to make a little sheet metal cap and it's necked in like that okay so it's just like a little it's a little cap okay and it fits in between here and then when this is all assembled it will it will go over this hub diameter here and then as as stuff falls down on this it'll it'll run off of it hopefully and yeah sure this will be a fairly close fit here but uh um stuff could you know can still get in through that but uh, um, it's better than just a flat cap on there so uh, I'm hoping it'll be better um, and also the bearings that I showed you earlier it had a shield on one side and it was open on the other um, and I bought sealed bearings too so hopefully they'll be a little bit better and um, um, and then the open bearings too so okay so anyway that's the piece we're gonna make and um, I'll probably do another sketch of the uh, uh, you know what let's just get started on the die and then uh, let's make our sheet metal piece So the first, uh, we're going to turn this down to the ID of our sheet metal cap. Um, that's the first step in making the die. So we've faced it. We've done a cleanup just so I can get a good measurement. Now we'll turn it down to the, the diameter. Okay, so the next step here is we're going to use this, uh, this 
little 45 tool here and we're going to create a little recess um, that's, that goes down into the uh, into this surface here and the diameter of that little recess is equal to the OD of this inner race here which is about one and three quarter and the reason is is um, this is the fixed part of the the bearing so the rest of this mess rotates here right we don't want our our shield to drag on uh, on the moving part of the bearing so it needs to be stepped out just slightly um, you know maybe a material thickness or something like that of, you know the material thickness of the shield um, just to clear that so that it doesn't rub on that okay so um, let's uh, let's go do that all right so we got our 45 degree tool here um, this diameter this is a known diameter so what we're going to do is we're going to set the tip of the tool right on the edge of that hole and we're going to calibrate this tool for that diameter that way when when I'm feeding out I know what that diameter uh, is uh, where I am okay so that's the general idea um, let me see if I can get a big head in there and uh, with the camera and everything and this isn't particularly a fussy uh, Yeah, yeah, we just look in the camera, huh? <laughs> Alright, well. Okay, it needs to come out a little bit. Yeah, okay. I like that better. Alright, so right about there. And then we're going to calibrate that diameter as 0.75. Okay. And um, let's see. Oh, and then we need to calibrate the tool on that surface. <laughs> that which is zero okay and then we're going to go in uh, about 40 thousandths 30 40 and then we're going to feed out to about one and three quarter like so okay so that's one inch Probably go a, a little bit further just because it's safe. I'm gonna look at the bearing again here in a sec. Point six, seven, one, two, three, four, eight. All right, so that's uh, that should be our diameter. Let me clear that stuff out of there. Mm -hmm. And let's just do a, uh, a bozo check there. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, and so now the sheet metal will be, I gotta think about the thickness of the sheet metal and where that ends up. So uh, let me uh, review that real quick. All right, so get that and uh, we broke the corner here. The last thing to do is, um, since we're going to use this as a as a forming die and we want to wrap that sheet metal around this corner here I need I need a little draft angle on the back side um, because the sheet metal has spring back right so what we want to do is we want this to be more acute than 90 degrees that way I can kind of over bend slightly to get the sheet metal to cooperate so I'm just going to use this angle that's on the front of this uh, this tool here and um, We'll uh, we'll just color this in so we can see what's going on here, like so. Basically, I'm just going to plunge it in there, and it's going to create a couple of degree relief behind the uh, behind that corner, right? But I don't want to I don't want to reduce the diameter either, right? So I really just want to bring it out right to that right to the oops, move your pen, Tom. Uh, right to the intersection of that chamfer is really what I want to do there. So um, let's do that. It's pretty easy. So uh, let's uh, let's calibrate this tool, and then we we'll get it in the right spot. Um, the flange is going to be uh, you know like a quarter of an inch or three sixteenths or quarter. So we want to go a little more than that. Let's say two. Yeah. Okay. Well, that seems like a lot, but. I think we're going to go slow with this one here. 
Okay, and we're just gonna plunge in, like so, until that blue just starts to fade into that corner. Let me get my little magnifier on here. See, the blue's getting thinner, 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 right? That's probably fine. All right, and now we got a little back angle on that to allow for the spring back of the, the sheet metal there. Yeah, that should work fine. I thought that was a damn good idea. <laughs> All right, so I should probably make a sketch of uh, what these forming dies look like here just for everybody. So the piece that we want to form looks like this. Okay, and I'm just going to draw it thick, you know. Okay, so what we need is we need, we need a die um, that kind of mimics that shape, right? Okay, and you saw what we were doing over on the lathe, right? So this is our, our little relief angle that we were talking about, okay? And now that comes down, okay, and it goes to the rest of our the rest of our die. Now it has a center hole here too. Okay, like so. Okay, so we put a flat disc in here, like so, and then we're gonna we have a top piece that's gonna come down and clamp this and actually force that material into that recess, and then we're gonna hammer form these ra the, the radius all the way around using our little our little angle deal there. So the top piece is kind of uh, looks like the top, right? Except it's a little shorter. Okay, and it's a little simpler actually, so it's just a, oops, yeah, okay, that'll work. And it also has an alignment hole in it too. So this is, this is the part that's going can actually do the forming and push that material down into that recess. So that has to be smaller Okay, we have a material thickness here like that, right? So that has to be smaller than that one to allow there to be material inside there. Okay, so we, we showed this. We're going to work on this piece next. And uh, then we need a little peg that goes down in there. And uh, then we need to cut out a, uh, a blank here. Okay, and uh, that's our blank. All right, let's get, uh, let's get back at it. So this is a uh, leftover disc um, that, you know, it's a drop from uh, Waterjet and it's actually a drop from the, um, the Kingmaker project where we made a four jaw centering machine uh, for the uh, Bar Z Bash. Anyway, that was a leftover disc that I saved and it's going to work good for what we want it to do. So I think first we're going to smack a hole in the center and... Um, then uh, we'll create our uh, our step in that after that. Let's do that. Sure, why not? That eh, looks okay to me.
So this is a test piece here. This isn't the correct thickness. This is just something I had. We just want to kind of try it here. See how see how the thing works, and then we'll uh, cut the real blank out there. All right, let's give it a go. Okay. A little bit of uh, distortion, but I think that'll be okay because uh, it'll go away when we uh, when we hammer form this edge here over the side. So, okay. All right. So far, so good. Got a little depression. Oh, let's uh, let's compare it to the bearing actually first before we get to, before we go uh, patting each other on the back here. Looks like a depression to me. Okay, it stayed pretty flat. So let's form the edge now. This will this will be fun. Okay, so it's real important to clamp this really well. Okay, so we're gonna put we're on the corner of the bench here, so we can kind of get at the whole thing. I'm gonna clamp it like so. So this is called hammer forming. All right. So that's nicely clamped. Now what's important here is that we get the bend started in the right place. And to do that, I'm going to use a, uh, a caulking tool. And this is just a piece of hardwood here. And it's to help start the bend in the right place. And the other thing is you got a choice of a couple kinds of hammers here. What we don't want to use, we don't want to use a metal hammer. We don't want to pinch metal, metal between metal because that'll stretch it. What we're trying to do is we're trying to shrink this flange a little bit as we roll it over. So what we really want is hard plastic or hard wood or something like that. Okay. So although I'm going to use this one to hit the, to hit the, uh, the caulking tool. So let's uh, go ahead and start. So you can see I'm just going to kind of work my way around and you don't want to get greedy and try to do the whole thing at once and then with the clamp you can swing it like that now I'm going to 
to switch to this. That's pretty good. Hopefully it'll pop off without uh, So you can see the you can see the flange is a little wavy after you roll it over, but it's it's pretty easy to flatten that out, and uh, I have to open that hole up a little bit too. So uh, anyway, let's go see how it fits on the uh, on our uh, our bearing housing. All right, well, looks pretty good. I mean, you get the idea now, right? See, it rolls over the corner and keeps stuff from from falling in there. But we have a little a little offset that's just gonna hold this up just a just a whisker. All right. Okay. Sweet. 